Well, thank you very much for tuning into my channel. And don't forget that I am a robust lathe dealer. I have a loaded American Beauty lathe ready to ship. So contact me and I'll answer any of your questions. Now the other night, my wife was cutting up some meat on one of my cutting boards and she was making a mess all over the counter and she demanded a cutting board with a groove. So in this video, I'm gonna make a round cutting board with a, a groove around the circumference. So let's get busy and I'll show you what wood I'm gonna use. All right, now I have a very nice piece of uh, Jatoba, Brazilian cherry. And uh, I've got a lot of wood that's uh, eight quarter or, or thicker. This is just a little bit over an inch, perhaps. So I'll show you how I'm going to mark this out. I want this close to 20 inches. We may not use this as our regular cutting board, but we need to uh, have it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to just use my, my uh, poster board template. And I use this when I'm making enormous bowls. So I'm going to just kind of line that up best I can. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this and cut that round. And then from the remaining section over here, I'm going to glue on a couple pieces on either, either side. All right, now I'm at the bandsaw, and I'm going to take this piece of Brazilian cherry, and I'm going to split it lengthwise, and I'll glue part of that on one side of my, my other board, and glue the other side on the other side of the board, and that'll make up my 20-inch diameter piece. All right, now I want to show you an example of gluing two boards together. We're edge gluing, not these two, but just as an example. Um, if you look at the end grain, I've got uh, the grain here in this direction. And this one over here is going in the opposite direction. Now, this doesn't really make your, your board or your tabletop more stable but they're going to warp in opposite directions, okay? And I'll show you that when I glue up my pieces here. Because this is really kind of a woodworking project, right? You can't really see this too well on, on this end grain. I don't really have that marked. But I, I went on my joiner and made a nice uh, jointed edge there. And let me show you something else, which is an old woodworking trick. All right, let's see here. Now, I've got these marked with an X. And when I run those through the jointer, I run the X against the fence. Okay, so I'm going to put that one down. This one, I've got the X right here. I ran those sides through the uh, the joiner toward the fence and then this one same way now let me explain why i did that okay now one more little woodworking 
tidbit here. Let's go back to these uh, nice, nice cherry boards here. And if I'm edge gluing them like this, when I run them through the joiner, I want to run this face uh, toward the fence. And over here, I want to run this face through the fence. Okay, and what happens is if there is a slight imperfection on the setting of your fence, you know, let's say it's set at 89 degrees, not 90 degrees, these will be supplementary angles. This is a 180 degree angle here, and if you, you cut these two angles, um, they need to be supplementary. Okay, so they may be imperfect, but I've evened that out by flipping them over. Okay, that's a, that's a good tip, okay? So your joiner may be set up imperfectly, or you may run them through there imperfectly. All right, let's get back to doing some, some turning, maybe. All right, now you may notice that I've got my, my hand wrapped up here. This is March 1st as I publish this video. It may not be out until later in March, maybe even April. On February 28th, I had carpal tunnel surgery on my hand. I know what you're thinking. I shouldn't be out here in the shop. I'm taking it easy. I'm doing a lot of stuff left-handed. And my hand feels, feels pretty good. It's, it's recovering quite nicely. So I just have a disposable brush that I'm going to coat, coat the edges with glue. And when I'm gluing, I like to apply glue to both edges. Well, even in some wood turning projects, uh, we're going to do a little bit of wood working. And this is a, a good little tip on gluing up some wood. And uh, so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to cut this round on the bandsaw and find the lathe and, uh, and start doing some turning. All right, I've got my cutting board all glued up here. And one of the best things you can do when you're gluing, take some water. It's not going to hurt anything. I'm not going to make that joint weak. A lot easier to clean this glue up when it's wet. So we'll let this dry and we'll, we'll come back tomorrow. So, yeah, moving right along. All right, my cutting board is right at 19 and a half inches in diameter. And the challenge is going to be, how do I chuck this up on the lathe to begin turning? Let me show you what I'm going to do. Okay, now let me show you what I've got here. I've got a block of wood. It's on a screw chuck. And I have created a tenon or a spigot that I can put into these chuck jaws. Okay, this is all completed. Let me take this off here, show you what I've got. Okay, so I have a screw in the middle of the, these chuck jaws. That just uh, clamps down. And later on, I'm going to attach this to my, to my project. And on the other side, I can just put, put that right into these chuck jaws. And I think that'll be um, maybe a safe fixing to, to begin with. And I'll show you that. And make sure my my tenon is the right size. Here's what I have. Here is the block of wood I was just uh, working on. I've got a tenon, and I've got um, a circle drawn on this, a little bigger than this block of wood. So I'm going to use that to line this this waste block up and. Uh, right there 
once you get this down, oh, by the way, I've got this, uh, I've got this on there with some double stick tape, double sided tape there. And when I start turning this, I probably will use tailstock support the entire time. I'm not going to let, you know, I'm not going to depend on this waste block with this double stick tape. This Brazilian cherry is really, really heavy. So next thing, let's go put this on, on a lathe, do some turning. All right, here is my fixing. I got my tenon right there. And I'm going to chuck this up. And I like to... I like to lock my headstock. There we go. There, put that in there and lock her down. There's all different ways of attaching a piece. There. And like I said, I'm going to bring up my tailstock for some support. Alright, now I was a little concerned that this was a little bit uh, warped. And I'm pretty happy with that. I think that'll that'll turn up real nicely. So this is going to be the bottom of my uh, breadboard right here. And I'm going to put an expansion recess down here and then reverse it. So again, bottom of the breadboard, it's going to be as flat as possible. Okay, and that's the next step. Okay, you're looking at the underside of my cutting board. I'm going to level this off right here, and then I'm going to establish an expansion recess. So, I'll try to get this as flat as possible. And I'm using a three-quarter inch bowl gouge. Alright, that wasn't too bad. That didn't take as long as I thought it would take to just kind of flatten that. I need to go over that surface and clean it up. And what I'm going to use here is a very large scraper. It's got a, a long edge right here that I'm going to just kind of plane that surface off. I've got a half inch bowl gouge and I'm going to clean up the edge here. I'm going to turn left handed so I can stay out of the line of fire.
Now one thing I'm going to do while I'm here is I'm going to I'm going to undercut this area right here. That'll give me a little bit of room between the countertop and the cutting board to grab onto. So I need, I need to do a little bit more work on the surface here. It's a little bit ragged. Then I'm going to put an expansion recess right here for my biggest chuck jaws and then reverse it and work on the top. Now as I recover from carpal tunnel surgery, I've employed my wife to help with this project and do a little bit of the turning. Now you'll notice that Cheryl is way too low in this opening clip. So we find something in just a second for her to stand on. She's not in a good position for turning, but she does a lot of the work that I'm just not quite ready to do because of my hand. I'm recovering, but it's slow. Uh, so I appreciate my wife stepping in and, and doing some of this work. I, I don't know. Now I'm going to follow along as Cheryl turns and do a little play-by-play. -play. I have instructed her to put her hand more on top of the tool, which is a lot safer when you're doing this sort of thing. If you get a catch, well, it won't be quite as devastating and that tool handle won't smack you in the face, which, yeah, how do I know that? Well, yeah, I do know that, but she's doing a great job and it's important for a very slow traverse and uh, yeah I'm just kind of standing out of the shot and uh, giving her some instruction here and we're looking for places on the bottom of my cutting board that need some attention. We have identified some of the areas on the bottom of the cutting board that need some attention and Cheryl's doing a great job here scraping those as she gets near the outside rim or edge of the, of the cutting board, it's very difficult. Okay, it's, uh, it's turning a little faster and it's a little bit more out of balance, but she's doing fine and I thought this would be a, a really good uh, project for her to do a little practice on. It's been a while since she's been out in the shop, but uh, it's nice to have her out here once in a while. So, yeah, let's turn, let's move on to the expansion reset. All right, now I'm ready to establish my expansion recess for my big Vicmark chuck. This is about a five inch uh, jaw set here. And I've got this uh, marked with some calipers. And I've got my tailstock backed off. I'm not going to do any turning with the tailstock not uh, locked in here. I'm just going to check this. I was just kind of guessing there. Actually, that looks pretty good, so I'll, I'll start working on that, and I'll, I'll certainly double-check that as I go along. Okay, now what I have is an old diamond parting tool. And I've really got that uh, ground at quite an angle, and that works really good for doing something like this.
right, now I have a straight edge here. I'm going to just check check the bottom of this. And I'm actually still a little bit high right there. But this area right in here where my chuck is going to go, that needs to be lower than this surface. So, you know, I'll just uh, continue on. And I've been taking out some of the material on the inside right here with the bowl gouge. And I'm, and I'm okay right in here. I need to work a little bit more uh, where my chuck jaws are going to go. to use uh, I'm going to use a beading and parting tool this is probably a 3 8 inch tool and I've got the camera backed off so you can see what I'm doing here I can't really get in there very well but if I raise my tool handle up I can get in there uh, safely and remove some of that wood right where my chuck jaw is going to go This area right in here, which is probably a strong half of an inch thick, I've got to have an area right here that corresponds to that so it doesn't, um, you know, contact right here. All right, I need, I need that area to get in here completely. So then I need to put a little bit more of a dovetail on that and we'll be all ready to uh, flip this over and work on the top of the cutting board. Alright, now it's not a bad idea to just really, really check your your connection here. And I'm still a little bit tight there, so I need to take off a little bit more of that diameter and I'll be all set. Okay, now I've got my expansion recess pretty much completed. And I've got a, a high spot right out here. So from here down, it's in good shape. It's lower than this area. Um, I put a couple little beads right here. All right, because this is going to stay in the bottom of my cutting board. I did a little bit of texturing right there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just take a marker. Put a little bit of color in that. I got to do a little bit of sanding on this first, and I'm not going to show that to you. That's that's too tedious. Well, I didn't like the uh, first color I put on there all that much, so I put uh, a little blue on top of that. Anyway, let's move on. All right, now I've got a couple uh, coats of shellac on the bottom of my cutting board. And that's going to be really cool. That's really pretty wood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my, my carving tools and I'm going to just uh, knock this little nub of wood off. I'm not going to turn my lathe on. I, I don't want to take a chance this thing coming apart. That would not be good. And I can just uh, sand this off later on.
Okay, I loosened that connection up with a, a chisel. There we go. That held pretty good, but I'm glad I didn't turn my lathe on. I don't think that would have been a good idea. So I'm going to put my chuck in here. So I'm going to take this waste block out of here. That worked pretty good. I like that. All right, time to put my my big dick mark on here. And there we go. All right, now I'm showing you the back side of my setup here. This is my my chuck, my expansion recess, and let's go around the front and I'll show you the top of my cutting board. All right, now I've got my, my tail center brought up. I've got a waste block here, and I'm going to also use my tail stock support for turning most of this. Okay, it's not a bad idea to do it. It's very heavy. It's a little bit out of balance, so uh, I'm probably going to save you from a lot of this. And I'll get to the groove out here someplace, and we'll, we'll uh, show you that. This is going to be really cool. I am working on the top of my cutting board and uh, I've done a little bit of work off camera trying to level this out. What I'm going to show you is much the same as I did on the bottom so I'm not going to bore you with a lot of this. I've gone over this with my really long, <laughs> I've gone over this with my really large bowl gouge. And now I'm just cleaning the surface up with this scraper. Okay, and it's got a pretty long cutting edge right along here that helps to level that out and remove any tool marks. So I'll show you a little bit of that, and then I'm going to go to the center and take my tailstock away and uh, work a little bit on the center part of that. I'm going to maintain the the tailstock support as long as I'm working out here. I'll tell you one thing, this is going to be some really pretty wood. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to double check my connection on the back side here with my chuck. And I don't think that's going to go any place. So I'm going to take an old woodworking chisel and separate this waste block. Okay, that worked pretty good. And it's got a little bit of uh, wood right here to remove. I'm thinking I'm going to do that with my scraper. I'm going to find the center on this. Right there. And I've got my speed turned now just a little bit. Okay, let me show you what I'm up to right now. I've just taken a pencil and uh, drawn a circular uh, ring around there and 
what I'm going to do is take a sanding stick. I just have some real coarse sandpaper. This looks like 60 grit, but I'm going to just run along there. I got my dust collection set up. That's a very simple technique and what I'm doing here is I'm establishing some high points like right here where all my pencil line has been erased and I can actually feel there is a little bump right there but anyway I'm going to turn my camera off and this is a rather tedious so I'll, I'll do a little bit of work on this off camera. I want to get that as flat as I can and then I'm going to make a groove out here. Okay, that is uh, a tool I don't use very often, that uh, orbital sander, but it's perfect for a big flat surface like this. And I'm getting there onto the groove. Alright, now what I'm going to apply here is a seal coat of shine juice. Boiled linseed oil, denatured alcohol, and shellac. And I'll put some uh, oil on top of that. My piece is ready to uh, apply a finish. Time to uh, lay out my groove here. I'm going to take a pencil and just roughly mark where the groove is going to be. So we don't want it too close to the edge. But we want to leave enough room in here for the Christmas uh, turkey. I'm going to take a uh, I'm going to take a small narrow parting tool and just go in at an angle on each side of my groove. Alright, now I think I'm to about the depth I want to go. I don't want to make this too thin in here. Anyway, I'm going to take a, a round nose scraper, clean this up in here. All right, well, there is my round cutting board with the groove. I got my first coat of oil on that, just some tongue oil. Well, I'm, I'm very happy with that. I think that's going to be a good addition to our kitchen. I can't wait for Thanksgiving. We can get a big turkey on top of that. I'll see you next time and please subscribe.